Happy Monday evening, everybody. Welcome to the Nana Boss <laughs> show live. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, tonight, we, we have a real treat for you guys. So, because tonight, tonight, we are going to start the rollout of interviews with the speakers for the conference. Are you excited, Yay! Marianne? <laughs> yes, I'm excited. I'm so excited. I know, me too. And everybody can see on the screen, if you want your tickets, you want tickets to the conference, um, there is the uh, QR code that'll take you straight to buy your tickets. Um, and then let me really quickly show one moment. Let's see, I have to, even though I have it down there, second, I will show it before the show is over. I'll show the flyer because I have this other thing queued up right now and it's not letting me show it. That's what it's doing to me. Streamyard. Yes. You can periodically show the flyer and all the goodies. Yes, yeah. we will. We will. Um, let me let's just say hi, everybody. Marianne, let's say hi to everybody. We've got Mr. Gary Spikes in the house. We've got Miss Cindy Bailey also in the house. And Miss Jean Hudson. And we've got Lenny. Hi, Lenny. Um, oh, Primal Cry. Hi. How are you, honey? Hope you're doing great. You and Mr. Woods. And we've got Daniela from Hidden Existence. Uh, loving your stuff, Daniela. And we've got Jane. Jane is here. Um, I'm sure there, Mr. Brian Barber is also in the house. Oh, Brian's here. <laughs> Brian, I know we got to get Brian. We got to get Brian on one of one of the trips. We got to get Brian. Yes, yes. Brian needs to come to Missouri. Brian, this is your official invitation to come to Missouri. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Hi, Roger. It's good to see you here, Lulu Bell. Hi. Hope you're doing wonderful, honey. Glad to see you. Um, let's see. Did I miss anybody? Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Don't think so. No, I think we got everybody. All right. So tonight we have for your pleasure, we have Mr. Richard Taylor here with us tonight. Hi, Gerald. Good to see you as well. Um, and Richard, I got to meet Richard I got to meet Richard at last year's event and just sitting with him or, you know, like in camp, like listening to the, like all of his amazing stories. He's also an author. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about his book as well. And just the way he, he's, I don't know, he's like a natural born storyteller, right, Marianne? Oh, yeah. I could sit and listen to Richard. He tells the best stories. And Richard has this friend, Drew. They are hysterical when you put them together. I mean, I would sit and laugh at those two. It was great. I loved it. I loved it. They, they just, they crack me up. I, I can go on all kinds of outings with those two. Well, let's welcome our guest to the show, Mr. Richard Taylor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's a it's a pleasure hey, to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I get to share, you know, yes. and I it's a passion, ladies and, yes. and lis listeners. Uh, there is mm -hmm. so much to tell about these amazing subjects and the the opportunities I have had to uh, document them and. You know, I was out there last year uh, with Mary Ann uh, along the creek, and it was such, it was so neat. I really wanted to tell her, hey, there's one behind us. I think she kind of knew I was looking at one. <laughs> and, you know, I felt bad about Lou walking up there behind the person. Yeah, I was tracking Richard. I was watching him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but they are that cognizant 
uh, of of the spoken language. Uh, I've even had them answer me in uh, Central Missouri. I was with uh, Charlie Raymond's uh, K K K B R O. I guess that's how it. You know, Kentucky Bigfoot Research or Origin. The K B F R O. Yeah. K B F R O. There we go. And uh, yeah, it's it's. Go. It's close to me because my grandmother was full blood Cherokee. Uh, grandfather was mixed blood. You know, I'm very proud and happy for the native blood that I have flowing through my veins, but uh, equally proud of the Scots, Irish, Dutch, and German. I mean, it's, it's who I am. It's, yeah, it's who I am, and I can't be any, anybody but me. You know, I could try, but it, I wouldn't get very far. But right. I actually, there in Kentucky, we were watching uh, uh, one, me and a uh, man, uh, uh, Hayden, it's his first name, and we were getting flanked. I don't know if you've been out there, you'll be looking at one and there'll be another one that flanks you. You know, they're tactical. Mm -hmm. And I had asked them, I, I, know, I know enough Cherokee to get in trouble. I'm by no means fluent. My uh, grandmother <laughs> was fluent. My aunts and uncles were fluent. Uh, but it's a passion with me. That was the Cherokee's original land. And there's a lot of history there, of in, them interacting with the big guys. So it's it's really close to my heart to go there and try to interact with them. And I, I was there, and we heard this one flanking us. I asked them to come closer. Let's be friends in Cherokee. Uh, then I asked them, what is your name? You know? And uh, I don't know which context or what part of the question, or was he just saying, no, I'm not telling you. know, He, he didn't. It was one <laughs> word. It was a very emphatic no. And I've got it on an audio clip, but I, I asked him, I said, Gata Uste, Dejadol, what is your name? And uh, I, I asked Hayden, he was watching the other one. I said, did the guy react? He goes, no, he's just looking around the tree at us. And that was Hayden's first time watching one, which, man, that made my night. So uh, uh, I asked it again. I said, Gata Uste, Dejadol, what is your name? You know? And the second time I said that, this big bullfrog deep voice from the flanker close to us goes, claw. And that is no in Cherokee, you know, more of a claw. <laughs> no. And, I guess uh, he was sick. I guess he was kind of like, hey, man, back off. <laughs> well, they, believe it or not, uh, they're very tentative and cautious unless they know you. And mm -hmm. I don't know how true it is. They say once you're marked, they'll know you wherever you go. And it, it's played out with me in different locales, mm -hmm. but uh, that they're they're tentative and and very reserved around some people. I, I guess they're very good readers mm -hmm. of of intent. Uh, they're I not. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're not there to be a spectacle, uh, a entertainer, you know, like an organ grinding right. monkey entertaining, you know, and, and reacting. <laughs> They're true. not that way. They're very autonomous and they can get offended. And if you offend them, forget it. it it'll shut down. Uh, courtesy and respect goes a long way with them. Mm -hmm. and, and you get a bunch of people thinking they're going to lure out a dumb monkey. No, they're not. not never gonna happen. Not at all. Not at all. It's, it's very, very intention based. Absolutely. But they read your intention. I don't care what anybody thinks or says. It's my belief. hundred percent. They know what your intentions are. And they go by that. If you're intending to be aggressive, I think they're going to repay, you know, like they're going to meet, they're going to mirror, right? What your intent is. Yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and they're extremely accurate at throwing things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. That's I was, true. I was with three researchers in Southeastern Oklahoma 
I've never had them throw that much stuff at us. It was a constant stream of objects for the better part of an hour. Mm -hmm. Not not one or two, but it was a constant flow. And I did get uh, one side peeker on my thermal. I got a picture of one in the tree watching us. I called him the fire control officer because he was watching us very intently. But it was funny. We're sitting around in three chairs on one side of the fire, and here comes a little branch rolls in. Mm -hmm. One of the guys, and he was mixed blood Cherokee, as I was, and the other was mixed blood Choctaw, and uh, he was picking the stuff up. He was collecting it, and uh, something else come rolling in, and we'd say, oh, it, it, it came from that direction, and the next object that comes in is 180 degrees the other, you know, the other yeah. way. And it, they're playing a game. Guess where we are, I guess, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at one point, uh, the guy that was collecting stuff, they were sitting down. I was standing behind their chairs, you know, with my thermal. And I wasn't being sneaky, ladies. I wasn't trying to, you know, I was just casually, you know, observing and, and, and seeing what I could see. And one thing come rolling in, I think it was a piece of broken bark. And as it rolled in, the guy was getting up to go pick it up. It was probably 10, 15 feet away. And he says, can't you guys throw this any closer so I don't have to get up and walk over there? <laughs> now, he was, he was, you know, it was kind of tongue in cheek. He was bantering mm -hmm. with them. Before he got to that object on the ground, I heard the thud in his folding camp chair. And I looked down and there was a quarter size rock in his chair okay ah, now wow. you tell you tell me that had to have come from a, a distance they were able to thread that through the trees and the foliage and hit his chair and the rock stayed there i'm going to tell you ladies that is pretty proficient at tossing stuff uh i know one yeah. of the guys one of the guys there told me about a friend of his that was wearing a big Texas size belt buckle, you know, mm -hmm. metal, you know, belt buckle. Mm -hmm. He was out researching and he kept hearing these little tinks and looking around. What? <laughs> Finally realized they were throwing small pieces of gravel and it was hitting that big Texas size belt buckle. Oh my, oh my word. Gosh. Yes. Yes. You know, so. Oh my cow. Yeah. Yeah. It, I've got a, a video. Uh, I, I may put it in the collection. I've got a whole lot of videos uh, and, and uh, sound, you know, I mean, uh, vid uh, audio clips. Uh, one of them that I'll be playing is uh, I took it in Jay, Oklahoma, uh, back about 2018, I think. I'll, I'll have to look. Um, I lose my dates because I've got... I got so much that I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get in there and make it the, the, you know, really informative for the people. Uh, I've mm -hmm. seen them. Okay. I, I don't have opinions formed from what they may or may not be. I've seen them. I've, I've interacted with them. I've got mm -hmm. pictures, videos, audio, uh, whether anybody believes it or not, ladies, I love sharing it and whatever people want to accept or believe that's fine with me i have mm -hmm. fun sharing but uh this was in jay oklahoma uh the locals there but well let me back up and preface a little bit the cherokee called these subjects one of one of the information it's more not published uh the storyteller is larry shade he's a historian and tory uh a storyteller for the cherokee nation they called them the Uni Udawahi, okay? That, that is one. I'm sure people know about Saul Kalu, uh, Kletch Kletcha, uh, the giant of Jakula Rock. You know, those are more, yes. you know, those are more published and known. But the, the, the stories and, and history of the Uni, Uni Udawahi uh, is passed down through tribal members, mainly. It may get published somewhere. I know I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> but but uh, they would leave out edible roots and berries for the, uh, the big guys. And in turn, the big guys would watch over them during hunting and gathering. This is back in the original lands of Kentucky, Tennessee, northern Georgia, uh, mm -hmm. north and south Carolina, and West Virginia. But 
it is carried over into Oklahoma, which is real squatchy, if you've ever been there, as is Missouri and Arkansas and, you know, the surrounding states. And uh, he would leave out this, this tribal, full-blood tribal member uh, on land there out of Jay, Oklahoma. He'd leave out peanut butter for him because the, the howler, the local big guy, and, and the, he didn't, he didn't make any discreet uh, calls and stuff. I mean, he'd just come up through a, a ravine and I've got an audio that I will be playing there. The howler just cutting mm -hmm. along down in this steep ravine. And uh, uh, he would uh, leave out peanut butter for the howler and he would tell him, and, and ladies that escapes some people that there are people living in the U S that have a uh, relationship you know, uh, they're, they're called habituators or, you know, mm -hmm. other, other terms. There are people that frequently interact with their neighbors, the big guys. Uh, I've, I've talked to uh, a number of different people. And matter of fact, my close encounter with the family group of five was on land owned by a lady that, uh, you know, uh, they, they told her to bring me out there and let me get a good look at them basically. And that's in my book. Uh, once in a lifetime thing there, but uh, I was up there and I'm talking to the, the, this tribal member, full blood tribal member, and we're walking his remote fence line and there's a jar of peanut butter on, on the, uh, the, the fence post. And I said, is that one of the jars? And he says, yeah. So he, I walk over there and I said, the lids on it. He said, yeah, they put the lid back on it. So the other, you know, varmints and stuff won't get their peanut butter. And, of course, I've got a picture of that that I'll show, uh, the index finger and the thumb swirl mm -hmm. of, of the remaining peanut butter. But I was out there uh, that night. I've got some night vision video of the howler. Uh, he's He didn't know who we were. You know, we showed up up there. He may have known who we, who we were, but he wasn't get real close and engaging. I got some night vision video of him there. But the next day, I'm on a ridge. Uh, I'm by myself, and the howler comes cutting up through this very steep ravine. Uh, on the start of my video audio, he is probably 90 degrees off to my left, and he's moving up through that ravine, making uh, – he's actually – this is funny, but he's actually doing a whoop you hoo you know? And the whoop is the real low, you know how they, they, they're they real low. Uh, it's got a lot of resonance to it. And it mm -hmm. shakes. And then, then they, he, he goes up, I don't know how many octaves. And I've seen other Bigfoot recordings where their vocal range is like phenomenal from very low up to high. But I'm tracking him and you're hearing this. He quits the yoo-hoo and he just keeps whooping. But I figured that that subject cleared about 200 yards, okay, a very rugged, wooded, uh, rocky ravine in about 20 seconds, which equates to about 20 miles an hour, okay? Ladies, I'm telling you right now, that is not humanly possible as mm -hmm. we know it. We know it. Right. But I'll be showing that video and, and a whole lot of other stuff. <laughs> That, uh, I know. I'm excited. I am so excited for your presentation. I mean, like I said, I've I've had the pleasure of like spending several nights <laughs> listening to your stories. And it's like, I can't even pick. It's not I can't even say, oh, this is my favorite or this is my favorite or this is my favorite. Like, I can't even pick them because they're all so good. And the way and like Marianne said, the way you tell, you're a natural born storyteller. And I think that's probably the Cherokee in you. <laughs> it, well, actually, the yes. Cherokee are very much their lineage. Mm -hmm. Their history is all about storytelling and very well mm -hmm. could be that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the native blood in me uh, yeah. is, is an attraction or, or what I know last year's conference, uh, the campsite there was phenomenal. Okay. Uh, other than the mini hurricane that blew through. Right. The, the perfect storm. <laughs> the perfect Absolutely. storm. 
I was out with Lou and we were hiking. They couldn't see the clouds. I was using my thermal and I got to looking at these boiling clouds and I told them, gentlemen, we need to get back to camp. And I don't, Marianne, I don't think it was five minutes after we got back from that hike is when it hit, you know? Yep. And uh, I was, I was holding on to, it knocked over a table inside my tent enclosure and Fortunately, the Velcro gave way. It wasn't mm -hmm. ripping, so it all just, the Velcro came loose on, on my covering. But I had to just stand there holding the frame for about 10, 15 minutes to keep from yep. it all blowing away. Fine. And fortunately, there was no hail, you know, but. Oh, uh, my gosh. Can you imagine? Whoa. Yeah, absolutely. But I've got that video clip. Uh, I don't know which night it was. It, well, the date's on, on my FLIR, but it was behind uh, Steve and uh, was that Michelle? Yeah, Michelle. Michelle and mm -hmm. Steve. That's where I was drawn to look. Um, and I, I discussed this with Marianne and, and uh, Marty, I can't turn it on and off. Okay. It's not subject to my wants and desires, but. Right. There are times where I get this distinct feeling, okay, I'm being watched, and I can more often than not zero in on where the feeling's coming from. Now, I don't know if they're projecting that to me or it's a sensitivity. I, I don't know. I don't have any, any, you know, solid answers, which is been the success of some of my videos and stuff. I don't know if it it takes them by surprise or they're wanting me to video them and and throwing those vibes out. It's a lot that we don't understand, but well, I do have, let's see, I do have the that I do have the thermal you're talking about. Yes. I can show that. Okay. <laughs> I can show that. And this is this is the uh yes, that's the camp. Uh you'll see the dark upright object or or subject straight mm -hmm. out uh, above up. above the left fender of that car. Like right right in the like right, right in up the middle. There. Yeah, exactly. This, okay. And I I'm drawn to that area and I begin to take the video and and I'm just looking at this point and then there's people walking by, and I'm not saying a thing. I'm just standing there. But and this, he, mm -hmm. it's upright. Now well, there's and, and you see how it moves. You know, it's moving. Exactly. And I'm I'm trying to make sure that in the camper, the thing is that is solid. Okay, people with clothes, you'll see the people walk by. Now you see me walking closer, and I'm going okay. Now, if you look at the tent over to the far left, up in the tree, there's another figure moving. You see, you can see the clothing lines on him. So, okay, mm -hmm. I have to look down. And yeah, like there's like one, there's, they're kind of yeah, offset. And, and I'm not sure about way up in the tree there. That might just be a tree trunk. But I've got some, that now you can see the tree trunk on the left above that, that subject right behind the tent. But Mm -hmm. There's some things moving over there and you can see the clothing line on that gentleman that just passed. But I just, I'm, I'm saying, okay, there's something over there, you know, and I'm not seeing clothing lines and it's moving. Trees don't move. So now I'm, <laughs> I'm getting a little bit closer, you know, and, and, and sure. this was, bef was this before the storm or after the storm? Oh man, this was I can't remember. If, yeah, this was before the storm. I yeah, think this, this was okay. before. Yeah, it's, yeah. Because uh, our tent, our tent, you see that hay bale there on the left. That's like our tent was right there at that hay bale. Oh really? Yeah, okay. and then her tent was right in front of the hay bale, and our tent was over to the side of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. You see the one, you can even see head and shoulder far left of the screen. You see that Y shape, yeah, the bottom yeah, of the it, Y. Man. You can see the head and shoulders. You know, I didn't key on them. I was still looking over. I saw them later. Now, now you can see they've withdrawn that real distinct uh, upright 
is kind of faded off in there, but now you can see him peeking out in the middle yeah. there. There's mm -hmm. movement, you know, I'm going, okay, yeah. And they do that. You draw closer to them, they withdraw, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if the, there he, he's looking out again. Now he's, now he's back in. I've got some enhanced clips, but he's peeking out right there. <laughs> And I wasn't going to tell anybody, but, you know, it's funny, ladies, right to the right of that is where the shower uh, facility was for all of those ladies on the film crew. So I yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if they had, you know, there he is. <laughs> looking, yeah, he's way out now. Oh, you yeah. Know? You know? And the interesting thing, too, about that whole, you know, um, situation was is that it it literally um like it was so strange because where you're like where you're kind of looking the creek is right down there right right so where they were where they were you're seeing x yeah. you know you're seeing this much of them but they're on a like the it's like it's on an incline like this. Right. And the creek is down here, right? And and so what? Who so who knows really how big they were? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's yeah it it's it's tough too in a lot of cases. I'll I'll show a video, and then I go back in the daytime. I'll show the video with the tall upright figure, and I go back the next day and I find the landmarks out of my. Uh, video okay and mm -hmm. this this subject's head was eight to ten feet tall and they never fully broke cover uh actually uh lou uh padilla uh it was with charlie's group we're at the end of a, a one access one way in road and uh, uh he did some great guitar work lou is is very entertaining he can yeah. He can carry a, a rhythm with and fill in licks Absolutely. and and Thank sing. You. He's 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 very enjoyable. It, it it makes it fun to be around him. He had he had played, and I got the feeling. I got up, I went over, and I started observing this this subject. And uh, that that's where they eventually answered me in Cherokee. But I've got that video. Uh, I've got another video in Missouri mm -hmm. uh, with Larry, Larry Newman's group. Okay. Uh, several years before, Larry's with me. Uh, that's where I think Larry got his first view uh, on night vision. I think was there. Okay, now, okay. now, just before we go any further, you are going to be since you're a speaker, you're going to be at the expedition, right? You're going to be out there with all of us, right? right. Okay, because you're obviously a magnet. <laughs> My tent's going to be next to you. <laughs> Well, let me tell you what, you have to go along and film him and Drew together because the last time that we were out there, so after he's filmed this subject, he's like, come on, Drew, and, you know, and so Drew's walking along with him and Drew's like, I'm going to give you about 15 more feet and I'm done. And, and Richard keeps walking and Drew's walking along. He goes, yep. Okay. We're about done. I'm, I, I, we're about to our 15 feet. We're about done. I'm done, buddy. I'm not giving you any more. Yeah. I'm sitting in that yeah. chair, and I'm about to pee my pants laughing at these two. Yeah, yeah. He he's uh, he's a great friend and uh, so enjoyable with the group. I mean, the way he oh interacts. Oh my goodness! Next, yes. You know, yes. The, fir the first time we were out, I had you know I I knew he was from Point, Texas, but I met him at. Uh, yeah, I think it was, uh, he's the colonel. Man, I can't think of his name. It was another BFRO uh, expedition into uh, Kentucky. Uh, oh, uh, I almost got the name there. Jack Schmar. There we go. You know, Jack Schmar. And uh, Drew had pulled his 32-foot RV trailer up, and I had parked in the next, uh, you know, spot over with my camper, <laughs> camper shell. And... Uh, Drew and I got to talking, you know, and he said, Hey, look, Rick, you know, don't, don't sleep in that cramped camper. He said, my wife didn't come along. You can grab the sofa in the front room, you know, there it's sofa sleeper. Well, I didn't pull it out into a sofa sleeper, but I did throw my sleeping bag on, you know, the, 
the sofa and, you know, had my own pillow. And I'm sleeping, and we'd gone out on an expedition. I, I don't know where, where it was, but about 3 in the morning, I hear a tap, tap. Well, okay, I wake up, and I'm looking around thinking, what woke me up? You know, I'm tired, and uh, I woke up. And before I could drift back off to sleep, I hear it again. It's a tap, tap, tap on the RV wall, not at the door, not at the back of the RV. It's on the wall right next to where my head is, okay? <sighs> They knew where my head was, you know, and I didn't want to raise up and look out the window <laughs> and see some big, hairy, ugly, you know, subject yeah. looking back. That's not the way I want to wake up at three or four in the morning. OK, <laughs> right. so I just tell him, I said, look, I'm very tired. Would you please let me sleep? And it no more, you know. So the funny. next morning I tell Drew, I said, Hey, did you hear me talking last night? And he goes, No. I said, uh, they're coming up to your tra <laughs> your trailer. Now he was a newbie then. Uh -huh. And he gave me a polite but incredulous stare. You know, I mean, he he didn't quite buy it, and I knew that. And and I know that about a lot of newbies. <laughs> it's hard for you to wrap your mind around these things really exist. Okay. I, right. I get that. I've been there and done that. Well, that day we, we had the big potluck. We cooked up about 50, 60 hamburgers, took them over to the big gathering of about 30 people. Well, if you cook 50 or 60 hamburgers on an outside set grill, stoned in grill, you're going to lose several hamburger patties, flipping them and going through the gaps right. and everything. We didn't worry about them. We left them there. They charred up and cooked, overcooked. Well, that night we went out on another, you know, foray. Came back in. It was it was maybe one or two in the in the in the morning. Kind of humid. I wasn't really trashy, dirty feeling. Yeah, I'd sweat a little bit in a sleeping bag instead of sheets. I can sleep. <laughs> I can sleep pretty cruddy in a sleeping bag and be comfortable. Well, Drew was wanting to get a shower and he had the hookups, you know, connected, but his shower is pretty small. Well, across the street, there was a six room shower building where you go in a room, you lock the door, you got your own bench, your own toilet, your own sink, your own mm -hmm. shower. It's all tile, much more comfortable. We grabbed his towel and everything. He goes out the back door and I'm right next to the back door on the sofa, uh, downloading uh, files. And I feel his steps, first step, second step, third step, bottom step before he got off, you know, that, that stair, mm -hmm. the whole RV shook and then the door comes flying open and he dives back inside. <laughs> his eyes are as big as plates. He goes, something big ran away out there. <laughs> what, had, what had happened is it was up to that. It was about 10 feet from the door. It was down picking the hamburger patties out of the coals, you know, the coals. Oh, cool. wow. It was eating the hamburger, you know, the charred hamburger. And it wasn't expecting us to come back out. And Drew had a real right. dim, dim porch light. So he really couldn't see very well. But when that door opened, the big guy jumps up and takes off that way. And Drew turns around and jumps back into there. I never looked at him. I glanced oh, as he so dived funny. in. I kind of let it for effect. I typed on my <laughs> computer for about 10 seconds. And then I looked up at him and I said, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was Drew's first, first time. I got to tell one story about Drew and then, then I'll, I'll hush on that. He's a great <laughs> guy. But he asked me, he was going to Colorado. I said, I can't make the BFRO Colorado trip. He said, well, I think I'm going to go with my brother-in-law. And he said, I don't want to drag an RV. He said, I'm going to take a tent. I said, okay. I said, but I wouldn't sleep in a tent. And, and he goes, why? I said, getting woke up at two or three in the morning with something pushing on your shoulder is not my way of wanting to wake up. You know, <laughs> honestly, ladies, when I go to sleep, I'm, I'm going to sleep. Okay. Y'all could have a whole a uh, chorus of, of, of Bigfoot out there. I'm going to sleep. I'll get up in the morning and hear about your stories, but they better. <laughs> uh -oh. waiting, waiting up. Oh, on the big guy. That's just me now. Okay. Uh, he went up there with his brother-in-law and I think it was the second night he got woke up after they'd been out and it was pushing 
on his shoulder, okay? And he finally wakes up enough to realize he's getting pushed on through his tent. It was a little two man tent. <laughs> Brother in law was, you know, they were sleeping side by side. Right when that happens, the brother in law shifts in his sleeping bag and the zipper goes. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was getting growled at, man, and he lost it. But yeah, I said, "Yep, that's why I don't sleep in tents." I would, I'd sleep in a tent. I'm not fearful of them. I just don't like to be spooked at night, though, ladies. You know, it, I, hang I don't on a minute. Uh, hang one second. All Brian, right. Am I having audio problems? Brian's telling me to put in earphones. I can't, I can't, uh, let me just check my settings real quick. Hold on. No, nope, right I think he's making phone. fun of you that if you put oh. phones in that they can't hear you, so they can't get you. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Brian. Yeah. I totally missed your humor on that one. I usually get, <laughs> I usually get every single one of your, one of your jokes, Brian, you know that. But that's true. I do do that. I don't. I don't have earbuds in both ears. Only in one. So now have, I'm not totally completely. You know. <laughs> All right. As long as everybody can hear me, because I didn't get oh, Brian's. Yeah. I didn't get oh. Brian's joke. Um. Let's. Okay. So I want really quick before we go any further, and before. Hang on one second. Let me bring Marianne back in. Let me take this one out. Uh, kick from studio. There we go. Okay. Before we go any further and while there's most of everybody is still here, let me just really quick, let me put this up on the screen and is, is it there? Is it there? There it is. There it is. Okay. Perfect. So in case anyone has not been to the Facebook page, the link to the Facebook page is being put into um, the live chat every, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes or so. You can go there and find out more information. But this is the lineup. Let me see if I can get this a little bit bigger. How's that? Oh, yeah. There you go. Is that better? Good okay. Deal. So everybody can see we've got we've got Richard Taylor, we've got Jason Kenzie, we've got of course Shane Carpenter, and we also oh, have the bacon. We've, Shane the Bacon Carpenter. That's <laughs> right, Bacon. We have Bacon in the middle, Shane Carpenter, <laughs> and then we also have Robert Kreider and Brian King Sharp. So these are the speakers that are going to be at this amazing conference. So don't forget. Go and check it out. Get your tickets. It's gonna be at a, it's gonna be in Springfield, Missouri. Um, Marianne's conference has grown so much. She had to actually get a larger venue for this year, and uh, it's yeah. gonna be amazing. And um, make sure you guys are checking and watching that Facebook group because you can buy tickets now. You can buy tickets to yes. the conference right now. But when she starts talk uh, putting the information out about the actual expedition, that's going to be in the Facebook group. Yes. So we'll 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 let you guys know as we move along um, as time gets a little closer. And this the QR code there in the corner, all you got to do is scan it and it'll take you straight to buy your tickets. So I think I think Marianne's yes, made it super easy, right? Yeah. Huh? Uh oh, did she? We're did trying. She yes, we're trying. Yeah. So we're trying to make it super easy. <laughs> yes. Yes, we're trying to. So definitely check that out, guys. Um, so where do you want to move next? Do you want to move to the footage from? The BFRO expedition. Uh, not the, the not uh, the one on the hillside. The other one. Okay. What? <laughs> you, the other uh, one that Marianne sent me. Okay. Um, I don't have them in front of me, so. All right. I'm, hang I'm on one little... second. I'll pull it up. Because this is really that's a when you were filming them behind us. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The the 
has the the music with it and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, that'd be a great one to show. Uh, okay, hang on. Yeah, and Brian's asking if all the speakers are in one day. Yes, Brian, all the speakers are going to be there one day, and then we are going to leave that event, and we're all, not all of us, but the group of us that are going to be doing the expedition, we're leaving straight from that venue and going out to camp. And so we'll be camping Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night. We break, break camp Wednesday morning. At the same place too, right, Marion? <laughs> yes, yes, we're oh, going to go back. We've been invited back. Oh, that that that's a great place. Great. Place. And hopefully, uh, we're going to have access to a couple of thousand more acres. Oh man! That yeah, is, it's definitely man. not something you want to miss. <laughs> Trust oh, me. I, they were there, you know, it was so great. Uh, there were people that had their visual sightings that, that correlated with the, the footsteps that Shane tracked around there. I knew they had come around my side of the camp, but I was sleeping. <laughs> Me too. You know, uh, uh, I wasn't sleeping. So I definitely, <laughs> you know, I saw and heard stuff. So I, uh, I wasn't sleeping. Were you one of the ones out early in the morning just sitting there, huh? Okay, this is I would yep. Good All job. right. Let's see. All right. Okay. I want to make this full screen. One second. One second. I want to make it full screen. Is it full screen? It's close. It's almost good enough. Hold on. No, and it's not what I want. <laughs> It's too beautiful. I want the whole dark on thing. Hold on. <laughs> All right. There that's go. pretty good. Yeah. That's Is that pretty good. good? Oh yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. Should I do? Should I turn the music off or leave the music on? Oh, leave it. Leave it. Yeah, because okay. it'll have the huffing noise, and and you'll hear the the big guy's footsteps okay. as he takes away, uh, takes off away. All right, guys, here we go. You'll see Lou looking at a footprint down there on the right. He's the one <laughs> bent over. That's where I was setting shooting the video. And that's the path the subject uh, retreated from. Now that's a daytime view, but the thermal filters out all that vegetation and there's the subject hiding, hiding in that uh, gnarled stump. He's laying on his right side, his feet. You can kind of see two dots, part of his legs and feet. And I crawled back in those bushes the next day looking for tracks. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just, it was too hard. It wouldn't, it wasn't a good medium to, you know. Get. No, there wasn't anything. I mean, there was trampled bushes, but that was about it. The reason I keyed on that one I felt, but I also saw one eye shine, one eye, not two because he's got that gnarled stump right in the middle of his face. He's peeking around both sides of it. You know, we were watching that cliff on the other side, but anyway. Yeah. I mean, I just stopped the audio right. so we could talk through it. That's okay. just, this and then you see it walk right here. Yeah, yeah. I tell I'm telling Drew there's one behind us. There he goes. And there, there he's, he goes. he's hunched over. He stands up right there and takes off yep. walking. And and, yeah. and not even it wasn't even there. I mean, it wasn't even like he was running. It was just like nonchalant. Like, yep, yeah, okay, time to go. Exactly. Uh, in this same area, uh, I've got footage uh, of of another time I was there with Larry and the BFRO. I backed and, it up a little bit. And uh 
Yeah, if you, you, you let it let let him hear the sound of that guy walking off. Um, All right, let me back it up. Right there. All right. And this is Drew that I'm talking to. <laughs> The huffing. Oh, yeah, there's one behind us. There's one behind us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's it? It's in that. Oh, man, they've got a good thermal heat. He retreated. It's, it's. <laughs> yeah. If you can see where my there's a line of tree. I, I tried I saw his head and shoulders. I tried walking oh, back yeah, in there yeah. and Drew Drew told me you got fifteen more feet, Rick. He didn't want to get in. <laughs> and look, I I totally understand it. You know, uh it's quite overwhelming to approach those subjects. I've I've got a uh, couple of oh. videos that uh, that I'll that I'll show in that mm -hmm. same area. Uh, part of my presentation has one throwing underhand, not overhand, but underhand mm -hmm. at at uh, Larry uh, Newman and like Drew was with him. Yeah, he was throwing rocks at them, and uh, it, it was pretty. It was pretty neat. You know that area is very wow. very active. It is. And I'll follow you in the woods anytime you want to go, Richard. I'll give yep. you more than 15 feet. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. Count me in. Well, they, they for some re reason, gravitate towards ladies. I mean, le they feel ladies are less uh, invasive or threatening and uh, uh, children, children playing, yeah. you know. So we've got one more. Now we have one more that we're going to show. And this one that we're going to show, this one's very recent, right? Yes. Uh, it's only a couple of months old. Yeah. It was it's only a couple of months old. I'll give you a little preface on it. My drone yeah. was, my drone uh, telephoto was at 2X. So the drone, plus I cropped in a little closer. This subject, I'd say my drone was 200 yards from him, level, off, off the hill. Yet he was very acutely aware of when my drone comes closer, you see him drop down in that stick pile. But uh, uh, very, he was interested, but he didn't want the drone to get anywhere close to him, you know. And yeah. I don't know if they know who's flying the drone. You know, I mean, I don't know, you know. Uh, but it's Thank pretty you, Brian. Cool. He's it's got some amazing, trust me, Richard's got some amazing stuff. I, I'm not, listen, we're just, all y'all <laughs> is getting tonight. Y'all getting like little sizzle reels. Like y'all not like for real. This like you don't even oh, know. Yeah. yeah. You that guys don't you know. To you got to come to the conference. You got to come to, because I'm telling you, he's got more than this. Okay. <laughs> Trust me. All right, just, let's we're go. going out in 10 weeks. We may have oh. more. Yeah, that's absolutely. right. A absolutely. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. I was supposed to be on that trip. Couldn't make it though, but I will it, be there in September. This video <laughs> was shot in an area <clears throat> pretty remote on private property. Um, I, you know, it anyway. Yeah, go ahead and show it. I, I can explain afterwards. A little circle will come up there to show you where he is uh, looking. And we may up. have to, yeah, and we we may play it two or three times because yeah, it, it's what. a very very short video. It's only thirty yes. seconds, so I don't, you know, we may it may be easy, you know, once everybody kind of like focuses in where they need to focus in at. But all right, yeah. guys, look for the white circle. It'll be white, not red, right, Richard? No, right. no more red circles. Only no white. more red circles, <laughs> just white. <laughs> Yep, yep. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> okay. There he is. As I start flying closer, he there he does. He ducks down. I'll I'll play it again. Let 
There you go. See, <laughs> I've got some other photos closer, but that's an enhanced view mm -hmm. of, of the subject. There's, there's obviously a branch or limb in front of him, but uh, he's, he's got a stick pile to drop down into. He was watching. Yeah, I mean, you see him move off. You see him yeah. move off. Yeah. He watches and then he goes, uh-oh, uh, okay. All right, I need to. Yeah. <laughs> he actually looks back it's up. Right, you know, right there, he actually looks back up. But now, yeah, does, uh, now did you, how did you find him? I mean, did you just see, did you have it on like thermal and then found him and then zeroed in on him? When I fly my drone over a wooded area, like this, I probably shot over an hour's worth of video here. I fortunately on my little, uh, my phone is used as <clears throat> the monitor for the drone. I fortunately was looking right there and saw him duck down. You know, uh, I went through over an hour's worth of video. I flew up and down this whole uh, hill, you know, doing a lot of nothing but uh, video. I had it on continuous video because as you can see, that opportunity to see him is very fleeting. Okay. Right. Yeah. And yeah. and if you're not just looking at that 10, 15 seconds of video, you would have never noticed him. Fortunately, I knew right, right where, what video and what time that I saw that one. Uh, I've been through all the other videos. I don't see any more, but that area up on the hill is in the same area as other researchers had activity. So gotcha. maybe I had, you know, I had my feelers out there, but, you know, at random, what are the chances? This, this was in the morning. I didn't tell anybody else I was going to fly my drone. There were, there were some other people in a cabin down in the valley there, uh, but it was spontaneous. What are the odds of a random prankster hanging out in the middle of nowhere in the Kayamichi mountains saying, right. you know, yeah. I'm just going to, I'm just going to stand here with this suit on until somebody with a drone comes flying by and yeah. I'll, look ladies, you know, exactly. is it, impo it is an impossible? No, but not likely, you know, it's about like getting hit by a comet or a meteor, you know, it's not impossible, but that's the kind of things that convinced me very early out in very remote areas where nobody mm -hmm. else knew we were being followed, being paralleled, hearing branches break, finding footprints and having stuff thrown at us. You know, when yeah. I was, when I was looking for answers uh, over, you know, almost two decades ago, that's what convinced me there is something to this. Brian Barber is asking, Rick, was it the movement that caught your eye or did you know before he moved? Uh, I've discussed with you two, you know, already, uh, at, it was at, just at, you. At, at times it comes to me, I know where to look. I can feel them. And out of that big screen, I was looking right there when he ducked away. Uh, I can't turn it on. I can't turn it off. But when I know, I know. Okay. It's, it's a very distinct feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I can feel that I'm being watched and as I kind of rotate, I can key in. I'll show a video there at the presentation of a, of a, a subject up in the tree. He was 538 yards away. Okay. Wow. Wow. What Gene the, Hudson, Gene Hudson wants to know before we go any further, cause I, we only have a few more minutes. Right. Gene Hudson wanted to know, Rick, have you ever heard them laugh? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Haven't. Okay. Haven't. I'd like to, you know. Right. You know, I, I've got the audio of one answering you, me in Cherokee. <laughs> you've had so many. Because yeah, I, because because you've had so many experiences and that, and I was like, we have, before you go tonight, I'm like, I have, because I started that question. She asked it like at the beginning of the show. And I'm like, I got to know the answer to this because like, right. I figured if anybody's heard them laugh, it would be you. So I have, you will though. I have, yeah. I mean, that they're, they're very relaxed. Uh, they don't take me as a threat. Uh, I was in one. Okay. I'll, I'll share this much. And a lot of people don't believe in it. Uh, I've experienced mind speak where they're, 
their message conveys clearly in my mind. Okay. Um, I, I'll take a lie detector test. If somebody thinks I'm lying, uh, I know a polygraph examiner, or you can choose one of your choice. <laughs> I'll, I'll put a thousand dollars on the table. And if I fail it, that thousand dollars is yours. You know, I'm, I, I just, I love sharing. And there's so mm -hmm. much about these subjects we don't know. Now, I've got some spiritual opinions that I kind of keep close to me about all of this. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, I, I'll tell you, I have never yet ever felt threatened, very intense, somewhat nervous, but I've never felt threatened yet. Uh, even, even when I feel they were giving me a firm back off, uh, I was hog hunting in central Texas, squatching hadn't entered my mind and I saw movement, which I'd been out that day with the landowner. Sadly, his side-by-side -side ATV got a flat, and I was out there very ignorantly or dangerously hunting by myself, and that's not a good deal. I mean, a lot of people lose their lives <laughs> to hog. Uh, right. Uncle of mine's friend was eaten by hogs, and my uncle was up in a tree to endure all that. So they're, oh they goodness. can get, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the worst nightmare. But I was creeping up on this uh subject or or the movement in the brush i hadn't even thought about the big guys you know and to this day i don't know somebody said they may have been benevolently you know swishing or shooing you away because you were fixing to get in some bad trouble with some some mean hog i was on foot nowhere to run hide or climb but i was well armed at a 308 lr 308 with about two or three extra magazines and a, a 45 ACP on my hip. I was well armed, but it was pitch black out there. And I mm -hmm. actually got a jolt like a police taser. It, it wasn't wow. directed to my whole body. It was my left hand. But for the better part of two minutes, my left hand was useless. It wasn't directed to my whole body. But uh, mm -hmm. when I realized it wasn't a snake or a spider, I I and whatever was in that grove of trees that I was creeping up on was gone. I just raised my hand. I said, okay, big boy, I can take the hint, you know, <laughs> don't know. I don't know if it was a big guy thinking I was fixing to cap him or a big guy watching saying he don't need to stir those hogs up, but right. I actually got zapped. And, and the reason I know it is when I was in my police Academy training years ago, I had to take a hit off a taser. It was just like, a taser, no electric fence, no spider webs, no snakes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we forgot. We we didn't actually start there. I mean, your background, you you have a, a you know, a police background, right? Yes. Uh, it, it's, I was an arson investigator for the fire marshal's office, uh, which was part of the Houston Fire Department. I was mm -hmm. a, a structural firefighter in the busiest district in Houston for four years. I was a paramedic and then uh, arson investigator. So I've been to the uh, fire academy. I've been to the paramedic school and I've been to the police academy. I, I've yeah. had all, all three areas of public safety and yeah. it was fully certified law enforcement position. Basically, right. you know, an investigator for the fire department uh, worked closely with the FBI, ATF, you know, the different federal and, mm -hmm. and city agencies closely Worked closely with uh, homicide and burglary divisions. Yeah. Uh, had to get away from it. it it's a young yeah. man's job. It'll kill you, the stress. And, uh, well, I'll tell you what. I'm really looking forward to your presentation. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. It's I, I, can't, I can't wait. I've been going through. I've got so much material. I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying and you're to. Gonna you know, edit. You're gonna, you're gonna also bring some of your books, right? <laughs> yes, yes. That's I'll bring some. Because this, books. yeah, because yeah, because this year I I I got to get my copy with your yes. signature, with your Good autograph. Deal. I'll bring. Yes, yeah. I will yeah. bring books. Yeah. Yes, I will. You know, absolutely. We will absolutely. have a blast. Uh, I'm going through my material, and and I want the best presentation. I think you'll you'll be very pleased. Uh, I think it'll be very informative to the people that do attend. And uh, these things live and walk among us. And there mm -hmm. are reasons, and I, I'll 
I'll show you some reasons why they're not often seen. Uh, I won't get into the uh, it'll be meat and potatoes. I've, I've got some videos. I'll just touch on it, and I probably won't show them there, but I've got a video of a fellow researcher disappearing off the camera. I could see him with the naked eye, but on my video, it was freaking me out. I'm looking down at my <laughs> video, and he's walking towards a, a, a belly crawler that was looking over a little berm, and he hit a point there where every light bending is the best term I can use. It was like looking through water. He walked, it's almost like those sci-fi films. When he went through that rippling looking whatever, he disappeared. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm freaking out. And the guy said, you know, I, I mean, it was uh it was stuff like that. I don't know how they do what they do. Uh, I've got a, and I probably won't show this one either, but uh, they're cloaking off of my thermal. You wow. can hear them walking in front of me and the yeah. five, five newbies with me are freaking out. I wasn't freaking out. I was just, wow. How did you do that? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it comes down to electro. Well, and I'll, I've got a graph. I'll explain some of the electromagnetic spectrum. There are reasons why sometimes we don't see things, and I'll 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 get into that. I get into that at oh, the yeah. conference, right? Oh, yeah. I've got I've got the, the material that I'll I'll, I'll pull it. up. So I'm, I I'm excited. I, I hope it. We it's all are excited. <laughs> we all are. We all are. Oh my gosh! It's so, it's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna yeah. be fantastic. I'm looking forward to it with great anticipation. I'll keep working. I keep saying, you know, I keep. Looking at my presentation, I say, yeah. you know what? Let me put this. <laughs> I'll put this in here. You know, We're like, oh, but I gotta <laughs> add this. I gotta add this. I gotta add this. I know, right? You know. Well, yeah. just you know remember. What we might be able, well, we want what we might be able to do is that extra that you have. Maybe yeah. we'll show it at the campout. Oh, yes, okay. that's yeah. a great idea. Oh yeah, then I can put a bunch of the stuff I've I've edited. Yes, yeah. Can. Okay. So it's, that, it's that's like a if deal. you come and camp out with us, you uh, get the extra. <laughs> you get the extras. That's great, ladies. That's great. I love it. That's a great idea, Marianne. Great idea. Right? Yes. Right. We, we get all the juicy, the good stuff at the con at the after party. <laughs> at the after party. Exactly. Oh, yeah. After party. Oh, I love and it. The, and the food has been phenomenal. Okay. You know, Marianne, hey, my yeah. hats, food was phenomenal last year. It was. You know, I gained five pounds. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me well, tell you. you know, I think good. that's important. You've got mm -hmm. to have good food so that you have good conversation. And everybody mm -hmm. sits down and they enjoy and they learn and they share. Yeah. And that's what we're there for. And, yeah. and that is so, so important so mm -hmm. important to just let people uh, chill out. I've been to some venues where it's almost like a, a schedule, you know, I mean, okay, we got mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not naming names here or there, but I, I've been to some, some venues, but they're just yeah. all orchestrated and nobody really gets right. a lot of slack time. If that's a good word. Yeah. Cause it's, 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 it's that fellowship. Exactly. Right. It's exactly. that, it's that fellowship, yeah. that camaraderie that happens when you're, when you're sitting around a campfire, you've been camping for three days and you don't, you don't smell so pretty. Uh, can, I, can I tell you one more story? A lot of camp, a lot of fellowship happens. Can, can I tell you one? Well, it's not a real short, but can I tell you one more story? Uh, yeah. My wife and I would go to my daughter-in-law's family get togethers. Okay. We were invited. We knew a lot of people, but we weren't really family. Very nice people, very fun. Uh, they they held them up at Beaver's Bend, Oklahoma. I don't know if uh, maybe Marianne knows about it. It's in southeastern Oklahoma, and it's okay, surrounded, yeah. you know, surrounded by very squatchy land. And uh, I was up there, and over the last several years, yeah, it got you know through the the family members that I was a Bigfoot researcher and. One night around the campfire, and it wasn't malicious. 
He's a very nice man. He just, you know, we're talking and he, he kind of yells out, Hey, Rick, how's your uh, Bigfoot research coming? Well, about half of the people, they're kind of like, what? You know, that type of a thing. And, and you two are well aware that happens in, in family gatherings and stuff. And I said, no, oh, I said, it's going pretty good. And I said, as a matter of fact, today up on the hill across the river there, I saw two individuals uh, and one of the family members had walked up on me and I showed him and he goes, wow, what are they doing way up there? Because it would have been hard to get up on that mountain. I said, well, they look kind of big, don't they? You know, I was just kind of coaching him <laughs> along, you know, look, ladies, while I'm talking, while I'm talking, I said, yeah, and, and they're around here it all of a sudden sounded like a rhinoceros coming through the brush and the trees <laughs> towards the group. Several were jumping up to run, and then it was a loud crash, and it got silent. And guys, what was that? Okay, now, this is while I'm talking, ladies. You're yeah. talking about an exclamation point. A big oak tree across the road was, was ripped down in two, it wasn't rotten. There, a car didn't hit it. A big oh oak tree God. split in two. Now, do I know for sure it was a big guy? No, I can't, you know, stake right. my life. What are the coincidental, you know, the details odds, right? that that happens while I'm talking to a group of people that don't <laughs> believe in Bigfoot and a right? big oak tree? Well, guess what? They didn't have their family reunion at Beavers. <laughs> 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 <the next> <laughs> Yeah, next to the next one's going to be a Shoney's or Denny's or something. And I wasn't, we weren't invited. <laughs> oh, you weren't even invited. I love it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. That's oh, hilarious. gosh. Richard, thank you so All much. Right. Thank All you right. so much. It's been amazing having thank you here you. with us tonight. Thank, you, thank, thank you. you so very much. You're most welcome. I love you. And it. You and, and you know how to reach me and I know how to reach you. And and Absolutely. and um yeah, so I'll see you in September. I'll see I'll see you see you in September. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I'll see yeah. you yeah. in two weeks. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. Right. oh yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Everything. Yeah. Oh, it's almost Christmas yeah. time. Yeah. All right. I'll, uh, <laughs> right? I'll, I'll say adios. Well, that you know, yeah, or I can say, uh, say, uh, uh, di diolahan daga lanesca ulats, you know, or nago, you know. I'm not, anyway, it's a goodbye in Cherokee. Well, thank you, know? you Richard. Thank, thank you, you very much. Okay. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. 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 bye Richard. Have a great night, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> make sure go get your tickets. You want your tickets yep, to the conference and pay attention to the Facebook page. The link is in the chat. It's been there all night long. And please remember spread love and kindness wherever you go. Have a great night and we'll see you next week. All right. Bye. Bye.